I always had a desire to be in technology. In my Abbotsley yearbook in year 12, there was a question about where would you be in 10 years? And I had said, working with computers. However, I didn't know what a technology career would mean for me and my career. I had just assumed that anyone in technology would be in a dark room, coding, not talking to anyone. However, 15 years later, I can say that my technology career is nothing like this. Every day, I'm connecting with people, having conversations, understanding their needs, and making amazing digital experiences. When I graduated high school, something transformational happened that changed the entire universe, but we didn't know it at that point. Steve Jobs invented the iPhone. It was the first time that an iPod music player, a phone device, and internet access had been combined into a single product. Although it's something that we take for granted now, 15 years ago, we would have had three separate devices to do these things. However, apart from these features, Steve Jobs had differentiated the iPhone on another level. He had identified that the current smartphones in the market were not easy to use, which meant it was really complex to actually understand how to use these devices in the first place. At this time, making technology easy to use was not considered a priority when building products and experiences. If anything, the more complex a product was, the better it was considered to be, because you actually had to spend the time learning how to use it. Apple, on the other hand, wanted things to be so easy that you didn't need instructions on how to use them. And this is user experience. User experience, or UX, is how a person connects when engaging with a website, application, or software. It also identifies whether the actual applications are meeting the needs of the users, so why they're actually accessing them in the first place. By launching the iPhone, Steve had instigated a new way of creating products that prioritized the user experience just as much as the functionality. Complexity still may have been there, but it was hidden away to allow for the user interface to be as simple as possible. While Steve was still rocking his black turtlenecks on stage, I was still trying to figure out where I fit within the technology space. I had decided very early on, after my first Java subject, that I didn't want to be an engineer. So I was trying out different internships and subjects to find my perfect match. I had originally landed on becoming a business analyst, so someone that captures the requirements for very complex systems. However, something didn't feel right about this role to me. We would go and talk to our customers, and they would tell us what they wanted. Then we would go talk to the end users, and they would tell us what they wanted. And then we would go design and go build it. For me, I began to question whether we were actually building the right things in the first place if we were just building what people wanted as a wish list, rather than understanding what they actually needed to do their jobs effectively. When I started my graduate career at Deloitte, they asked me if I wanted to become a UX designer, so someone that actually gets to research and design digital experiences. For me, I felt my leaders at Deloitte knew more about me than I did at the time, but I thought it was a great opportunity to try something new, and it was a skill that was in high demand with our clients. As I began working on more UX projects, I realized that user experience is more than just taking what's said at face value. Rather than, we actually build experiences based on what people need and what their user goals are, and understand this both from what they tell us, but then also what they do and what they imply, to actually build the most meaningful experience possible. A few years later, when I moved with Deloitte to San Francisco, I had to make the decision on whether to focus on UX research or UX design. For me, I always loved talking to people, understanding their needs, and helping them. And so for me, moving to user experience research was a no-brainer. But as I learned more about UX research, I realized that being a researcher is more than just having these conversations and translating them to user needs. There are three main principles that we focus on as user researchers to build these meaningful experiences and connect people to technology. And they are empathy, understanding, and advocacy. As a researcher, empathy underpins everything that we do. It's the ability to put yourself in the shoes of someone else, to feel what someone else is feeling through their frame of reference. David Foster Wallace has a great story around this called This is Water. There are these two fish swimming along one day, and they swim past an older fish who tells them, morning boys, how's the water? 
and he swims on. The two fish keep on swimming for a little while, and then one turns to the other and goes, what is water? As fish are always surrounded by water, it's not something that they're necessarily thinking about. However, they should, because being in this water immersed completely changes their perception on how they perceive the world. What this means is for us to have empathy, we need to understand the water that others are swimming in, even if they're not aware of it themselves. One time where empathy was incredibly important in my research was when I was working with the Commonwealth of Kentucky, which is a state in America. And I was there to help them roll out healthcare coverage for the entire state. Now, in America, healthcare coverage is an incredibly political topic. And unlike Australia, you always have to pay for healthcare coverage. And someone who's been in very privileged positions throughout my life and has always had healthcare, I was now responsible for researching and understanding people that didn't have health coverage, either because they didn't want it or they couldn't afford it. I still remember talking to this older woman in a low socioeconomic part of the state, in a very rural area. Her background was completely different to mine. And the more that she shared her story with me, the more I understood that for her, she was actually scared about getting healthcare coverage. She was worried that she wouldn't have that support in those critical moments that mattered, like if she had to go to hospital. And so the more that she shared, the more I was able to put myself in her shoes and realized that healthcare is an incredibly emotional decision. And it helped us reframe the way that we actually built the product to make sure that we could take this into account. The second principle that we focus on as researchers is truly understanding others. There is a quote often attributed to Henry Ford that says, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said they wanted faster horses. Now, there isn't any evidence that Henry Ford ever said those words, but the words themselves help us consider what's shared at face value. What Ford did in the same way that Steve Jobs did was identify the need and build the best solution possible. So instead of faster horses, we got a car. And instead of all of these different devices, we got the iPhone. Many people will try to solutionize their problems based on their own context or water. And so rather than taking these solutions at face value, it's important to understand the underlying problems that they're looking to solve for. As researchers, we focus on these problems to make sure that we can actually build the most meaningful experience possible. Creating a shared understanding with people is incredibly important when you are building something entirely new, so you can understand the problems that you need to solve with technology. When I was at Uber, I was leading research for Uber Freight, and one thing that they wanted to focus on was completely digitizing the trucking industry, which is a multi-billion dollar industry in the US, and it was something that had never been done before. And for me there, I was actually researching truck drivers. Um, but for me, I couldn't actually get truck drivers to come to the plushy San Francisco Uber offices because they were too busy looking for their next truckload to carry. However, I knew that truck drivers were connecting and meeting up with each other at truck shows. So rather than meet them coming and visiting me, I would go visit them at truck shows. By immersing myself in the truck show experience, I was able to understand how truck drivers worked, what they valued, and the challenges that they had that could be solved by technology. One of these challenges was around helping truck drivers with their career progression. In the industry, a truck driver would want to own many trucks so they could have more drivers driving on their behalf. By understanding this challenge around career progression, we were actually able to launch a feature called Fleet Mode with Uber Freight which allowed truck drivers to delegate loads and freight to other drivers in their own network. The final principle that I focus on as a user researcher is around advocacy. Realistically, users are not going to be in the room when the decisions around their experiences are being made, and so I have to make sure that I understand them and empathize with them so I can advocate for those experiences and the decisions to make sure that the most meaningful experiences are being made. But as an advocate, I just can't show up and expect for others to understand users in the same way that I have through my research. The same way that the users that I research have their own water, my team has their own water as well. And so I have to help them on that journey to bring awareness to their own bias and assumptions to help them also build empathy with our end users. The other challenge that I have as an advocate is I just can't storm into a meeting room, tell people that they're wrong, and have them expect them to listen to me. 
Imagine the last time that someone told you that you were wrong. You probably outright disagreed with them, unless there was evidence to back it up. One of the research projects I worked on was for a large oil and gas company to launch a global platform for their fuel suppliers. Because so many people on my team had been in the, en been in the en energy industry for years, there was a lot of domain knowledge, so they assumed that they knew everything there was to know about our end users. However, I wasn't so sure, and so rather than telling them outright that they may have some bias, I decided to use data to solve my problem. I decided to run a research activity called a first click test to see if there were certain parts of the website that were findable or not findable to our users. Now, usually I would run this just with our end users, but I decided to actually also run this with our internal team as well. So what this let me do was actually compare the results of our users to our internal team. And unsurprisingly, well, to me at least, the results were very different. When I shared these results back with the team, they were finally able to see the water in front of their eyes and start to build empathy for our end users. Although these three principles are incredibly important as a researcher, there is one golden thread that weaves them all together. Connection. As a researcher, if you can't connect with who you're learning about, how are you going to be empathetic to their lived experience? How are you going to understand their needs? How are you going to advocate for the experiences that you deserve? Sorry, that they deserve. As a researcher, I've met with so many people, from advertisers to postal workers to truck drivers and fuel suppliers, all over the world. And at the end of the day, they are all human. They all have the same dreams and desires and motivations that you and I have. And we often forget, especially when there's a computer screen between us, that we're all made of the same four periodic elements. Connection and technology is more than just the binary connection between computers. Connection and technology is building these relationships with people to find a common understanding, especially when people are coming from different walks of life than you. Having this understanding can help us empathize with others, understand their needs, and advocate for their representation in the decisions around their experience. The more that organizations and individuals look for this human connection and technology, the more we can put the users at the center of our universe in everything that we do, whether it's building a website, a mobile app, or a way for us to connect IRL. So how can you connect to the human in the experience in everything that you do? Firstly, recognize your own water and challenge your own assumptions. What are the biases and assumptions that you have, learned, have based on your own learned experience? By understanding how your water changes your perception, you can recognize how to change your frame of reference to empathize with others. Secondly, identify the pain and the solutions. When someone shares a solution or an outcome with you, try to understand what the underlying pain point or challenge is that they're looking to solve for. Look between the lines in these challenges to find the right problems to tackle. And finally, champion your users. Be their biggest advocate, challenge the status quo, and make sure that their needs are being represented in the products being built for them. Make sure that the user experience is built for their experience. Now, I still have a desire to be in technology. I've, I've loved my career completely. But I no longer want to work with computers anymore. I want to connect with humans. Thank you so much.